Welcome to the first class in Azon Masterclass 3. This new training series is going to teach you how to take some of the tactics that you learned in AMC 1 and AMC 2 and apply it to make a really unique and powerful kind of website that you can use to promote Amazon products as an affiliate. Now the kind of website that we are going to be making here is a local based website. We're going to base this on one particular city or possibly a small collection of cities within a particular state. But not only that, we're going to then break down that targeting even more and assign a very specific niche to it. For example, on my screen I have a dog park and dog beach site for Los Angeles, California. Now this is a site that I have been building and what makes this so unique that you will not find on any other Amazon website out there is that we are not trying to bring traffic in based on product names. What we are doing here is trying to bring traffic in based on things that only occur within a vicinity of a local city, but we want to bring in people that are specifically interested in one particular thing. That way we can sell them products that are related to that niche. So with a dog park site like this, I can easily promote any kind of dog related product from Amazon on this website. I could promote things like collars and leashes and GPS trackers, different kinds of travel accessories, safety accessories, health accessories. There's really going to be a pretty wide variety of different kinds and values of products that I could promote here. So the traffic itself, this is going to be people that are looking for information on a particular dog park. So we have all kinds of information, but what makes this site really unique is the pictures. As you can see, I have a lot of pictures on just this one page for this particular dog park. So the question is, where did I get these pictures? Did I go out on Google and find other people's pictures and load them up on my website? The truth here is, I did not. What I actually did was I got my own unique pictures that do not exist anywhere else. Now there are two ways you can go about doing this. You can either go out yourself and take these pictures if you choose a city that is somewhere close to you to where you can actually drive there and visit all these places yourself to find out information about them and to take pictures and possibly even to shoot some of your own videos there. So what makes this approach so unique and powerful is that other people, other websites out there are not going to have your images. They're not going to have videos that you might take there. So this information can get indexed by Google and Google will really respect your website because of it your images are going to show up in Google image search for relational types of keyword phrases when you're searching for information about the dog park or whatever other type of local place you are trying to target. So you're going to be bringing in the traffic to pages like this and then you will get people to go and purchase Amazon products that are relational to what they're trying to look up on this website. 
So I'm going to be teaching you guys throughout the course of this particular series how to build this type of website. There are going to be some basic concepts that I may not repeat, things that I have already discussed in AMC1 or AMC2. So with that said, if there is something particular that you see me talking about, especially having to do with the actual construction of the website, if I just skip through something particular, chances are I have already covered this in a previous series. So what I'm going to do here is begin by showing you guys how you can pick the city that you want to target and also how you can select the niche that you are going to target on that website. So to begin with, the obvious choice is whatever city you live in or perhaps your closest large city to where you live. Personally, I live in Greenville, South Carolina. Greenville, South Carolina does not have a massive population of people compared with really large cities, you know, it is not a city with a million plus people in it. I do have some cities somewhat nearby to me. Atlanta, Georgia, Charlotte, North Carolina are within a couple of hours driving distance, so I could possibly consider targeting those types of cities. However, you do not have to limit yourself to just the cities that are around you. It all really depends on what your capabilities may be. What I'm really discussing here is how you're going to go about retrieving the pictures and the content for these different locations that you want to be featuring on your website. If you can go there yourself and you have a camera, possibly a video camera, then that is an easy and really cheap way to go about producing these websites. If you do not have a lot of money to work with to get a first successful Amazon site running, I would recommend picking a city nearby where you live, either the actual city that you live in or a nearby large city. If you have even a couple hundred dollars that you could possibly invest into this website, then you can consider any city in the United States. I'm going to be teaching you how you can both get these pictures yourself for the website and also how you can go about paying somebody else to get these pictures for you. Obviously for this website, I don't live in Los Angeles, California, and I don't live anywhere close to it. This is actually the complete opposite side of the country from me. So it would be impossible or extremely expensive for me to actually travel to Los Angeles to visit these places and take these pictures. So that would not be a feasible way to go about building this website. But I can just simply hire a photographer that lives in Los Angeles, California, and get them to visit all of these places for me take the pictures or videos or whatever else I may be looking for and then have them simply deliver that information to me online and then I can just go in and construct my website around the content that I have purchased that way. And this is going to be a hundred percent unique pictures and video and other types of content that you're going to be able to achieve by 
going through this process and actually building these unique types of websites. So let's say you are trying to figure out what city you want to target. Where do you start? What I would recommend to do is go over to Google and you want to look for cities based on their population. If you live in a city and you don't have money to go outside of nearby cities to actually hire a photographer and you want to do this yourself, then you may have a specific city or a couple of cities that you have in mind. So you could simply search for the populations of those cities if you would like to. So I could come over here and type in population of Greenville, South Carolina. And then I would get information here that would tell me population based on a certain date. Now, when you are trying to gauge whether or not a city has enough population to actually proceed with building a website about it, you don't want to be targeting cities that have a couple thousand people in them, obviously, because you're not going to be able to get everybody from that city to actually visit your website. You're just going to be targeting the people that live in that city that are interested in one particular thing. So in my case, I would be targeting people that are interested in dogs. So the chances of 60,000 people how many of them might be interested in dogs and how many of them might actually be interested in taking their dogs out to a local dog park, for example. You're going to have to be slashing that number at least in half and likely even less than that. So you want to be able to see still a decent number of people within that city that would actually be interested in your niche. Now, there's no set number to go for here because you do have areas where certain types of things are more popular. For example, if you picked the most populous city in Alaska and we're trying to target dog parks, chances are there's not going to be a lot of people in that city that are actually interested in dog parks. Why? Because it's really cold there a large part of the year. As a comparison, you could look at a considerably smaller city in a state where dogs were really popular. Maybe even a warm state that had a pretty decent climate throughout the year. Something on the coast of California something down in Texas or Florida, for example. These states can have a more active outdoor population compared with other states. So you always want to consider outlying factors like that before you jump to a quick decision of whether or not your city might have enough people actually living in it. So now let's say you're not quite sure what city you want to go after still. We can search for population of cities in the United States. And ultimately, we are looking for, I like this Wikipedia page. I've used this in the past, and it makes for really good research. So this is the list of United States cities by population. And I'll be getting back to this in a few minutes. But over here on the right, you can see that there are different types of categories they have used for this ranking. If you don't just want to search for cities, let's say you want to search for a particular metropolitan area, 
especially with some of your larger cities, you know, people in the metropolitan area might travel into the city to go to a particular business or a outdoor attraction like a dog park, for example. But to start with, I'm just going to browse down through this list of cities. Now, you can see here that they have a pretty extensive list going on. They have the top 294 U.S. cities sorted by their population. And most of these cities are at 100,000 people and up. This column right here, the 2013 estimate, is a pretty decent number. This is an actual census number, whereas this is an estimate based on population growth. The exact numbers of the population, though, are not important. You are simply trying to get a gauge for what cities might potentially have the most amount of search engine traffic looking for information about a particular subject. So the obvious ones, New York, Los Angeles, are your two largest cities in the entire country. Now, when you're targeting any one of these places, you also have to consider things up towards the top of the list, while they have more people, they will also have more competition. If you go for something further down the list that is perhaps in the half a million range or so, you will encounter a lot less other websites that will actually be in competition with you simply because there are less people. So these are going to be the obvious ones that people will typically jump for when they are using this type of strategy. So the website that I built, obviously I picked Los Angeles. It has 3.8 million people in the actual city. But I, again, would not necessarily need that many people. I've targeted other cities like San Francisco, for example. I actually have a dog park site that I've built on San Francisco as well. And this only has 800,000 people. That's quite okay. There are still plenty of people in that city and actually a lot less competition among other websites in that city. Now the other thing you have to consider is how many people may be living nearby in these cities that you're thinking about targeting. I like to use the metropolitan statistical area list over here and this gives me not just a city but kind of a collection of cities in particular areas that are generally lumped together to the point where when you're talking about that city sometimes you're actually referring to the whole metropolitan area and not just the city itself. For example, with New York, you actually have even things in a different state. You have Newark and Jersey City that get lumped in with New York City to give it its real population. Same thing with LA here. I not only have Los Angeles, but I also have Long Beach and Anaheim, California. And that grows at 3 million, 3.8 million people, up to over 13 million people. So now, when I look at San Francisco, that only had 800,000 people before, its metropolitan area is actually 4.5 million people. So you can see why this is obviously going to be plenty of people that I could possibly target. San Francisco includes areas like Oakland and Hayward and even San Jose, California. 
So this gives me a pretty broad area that I can try and target. Now, I had mentioned before that you can go much further down the list to actually try to pick a city. You know, if you're here in the 300,000 range, um, Spartanburg, South Carolina is a nearby city to me. Its metropolitan area has 320,000 people. And this is also including Greenville and Anderson, South Carolina. So this is a little more accurate number of how many potential people might be out there when I'm going after a city or surrounding areas for a particular city. So always consider how much total traffic you might be able to go after and don't just simply focus on the actual people that live within those city limits. Anything, any state or any city that is not considered to be overly popular when it comes to whatever niche you are considering targeting. If you have a quarter of a million people in this list for the metropolitan area, so this puts me at number roughly number 185 and up, that's 185 different cities or metropolitan areas that would make good potential candidates for this type of strategy. So there really are a ton of different possible choices out there for you. So don't just limit yourself to New York and Los Angeles, the obvious choices like that. You know, go further down the list and try to get creative with it and really consider what might work the best or what's going to be really popular in this city or you know what what do people already look for what are their hobbies in these different areas so now once you have selected a city that you are thinking about targeting you then need to try to narrow your focus down into an actual niche the way you go about doing this is the first thing that I would recommend is think about the city, what it is like. If you're not sure, do a little bit of research on the city. Find out what's popular around there. What are some of the well-known attractions? Or if somebody was going to maybe even take a vacation to that city, what would they be interested in doing and seeing? Sometimes that type of thought can lead you to selecting a really cool niche. For example, with Los Angeles, and honestly a lot of other cities in California, especially coastal cities, you typically have a more Mediterranean climate there, and as a result, you also have a lot of people that spend a lot of time outdoors. So then the question is, what do they like to do outdoors? What different kinds of hobbies are popular in the area for them to do? Beaches are obviously something that's really common. Any coastal city, you're going to have beaches that people will typically go to. But then around the beach areas, you sometimes might have different types of places and businesses that are geared towards a specific niche. In Los Angeles, you happen to be able to find a lot of dog parks and dog-friendly beaches, among other types of things. Obviously, dog-related is not the only thing that I would have to target in this kind of city. I could easily have gone for other things like um, bodybuilding, for example. 
There is a, uh, the famous Muscle Beach in California. You're not limited to just one niche within each of these cities. But I would still recommend trying to figure out what might be a popular niche within that city. If you were going after a city somewhere where it was cold, down here for example, Denver, Colorado, obviously you might not have as much of an interest in something like a dog park in Denver, Colorado, simply because it's going to be colder more months throughout the year. You also have to consider if you have half of the year where a place is under snow and you want people to be going to a dog park, then chances are your site's only going to be popular for half of the year, which might be okay. You just have to weigh the pros and cons and decide whether or not there would be enough people interested in that type of thing during the peak season to make it worthwhile to build this type of website. So ask yourself, why do people go to Colorado, for example, if they were going to take a vacation there? They might be going for snow skiing, snowboarding. They might be going for things like hiking and mountain climbing. It just really kind of depends on where you are. You know, you have all of these different interests and special things about these different places that make them unique. And you can turn all of this into not only a really helpful website that people will be able to use as a guide in these different cities, but then you can turn all of this into commissions on Amazon by promoting relational products to these niches. So once you have a city selected and you have some kind of an idea of what niche you might want to target, you can then go over to the keyword planner on Google and simply do some searching. There are a couple different ways that you can actually go about doing this. First of all, look at your targeting here. I always first set this on United States, and then I might do something like Los Angeles Dog Parks, and I'll click on the Get Ideas button. Now sometimes you can look at these ad groups and find an ad group like Dog Beach, or Dogs Lost right here is showing me a lot of dog parks and dog beach related keyword phrases. And you can see some of these that are just fairly general keyword phrases actually have a decent amount of traffic. Dog parks, Los Angeles, dog park, Los Angeles. These have 320 and 260. Dog beach in Los Angeles has 880 monthly searches. This would be a really, really good primary keyword phrase to go after. Honestly, a lot of these would be. Now, if I hover over the trends, you can see that there is a small part of the year, October, November, and December, where the weather is likely a little too chilly for people to still be going out to the beaches, or it is just not as popular as during the warm months of the year. But then throughout the rest of the year, even in January, this jumps up to 720. March has 1300. July and even August have 1900 people searching for Dog Beach in Los Angeles. That's a lot of traffic and can easily make for a nice profitable website. Now if you're not seeing numbers like these on your own niche in your own city that you have decided to select, it is okay. You don't have to have numbers that are 
quite this high. You know, you don't have to have 1,900 people searching for it. I like to look for at least 500 people a month searching for a particular topic. Maybe not necessarily all throughout the year, but throughout a decent portion of the year. Even this one here that has an average of 320, if you look at the actual months, you have some months that are approaching 500 monthly searches. You also have to consider whether your website might be able to pick up traffic from just one of these keywords or whether it might have or be able to pick up traffic from multiple keywords. I could easily target dog parks and dog beaches on the same website. I could even think a little into the future. Once I targeted all the dog parks and dog beaches in Los Angeles, what else could I write about and feature on my website that is not a dog park or a dog beach, but would still be related to it. I could do things like dog training. There's 480 people a month searching for that. Even if I am only reviewing and featuring local dog training businesses in Los Angeles, it's all relevant to my topic. What kind of people do you think will end up coming to my website off of Google when I have dog parks and dog beaches and dog training and things of that nature on my website. They're going to be people that own a dog. And as a result, it is much, much more feasible to get those people to buy dog-related products that I'm trying to promote to them. Not only that, though, Let's say you're promoting only Amazon.com products. Let's say you never bothered with any of the other Amazon locales and you're just messing with USA traffic. Where do you think the people are going to live that visit this type of website? Almost every single one is going to be living in possibly the city that you're targeting, but even if they're not in that exact city, chances are they live somewhere in the United States. These websites get a massive, massive percentage of USA traffic, making it much, much more likely that you can convert that traffic into a sale on Amazon.com. So you're bringing in the right demographic here and you're bringing in the right niche targeting, which is what makes this type of site so powerful. So now, what if you can't find a nice niche like this that has a decent amount of keyword traffic? Should you pick a different city or should you try to pick a different niche? You don't necessarily have to jump to an immediate conclusion here because this is not the only traffic that we're going to be going after on this website. What I would recommend to do is go over to Google and search for one of these terms that basically describes your broad niche. So I could search for dog parks Los Angeles. Typically when you are searching for some kind of general business like that, you will get a nice little listing up here right across the top of these different places. So this is not necessarily the keyword phrase that you really want to be ranking on. Sure, it would be great to have a nice ranking right here up at the top of this type of a keyword phrase, but a lot of the traffic will end up just checking out this Google stuff here. So what I'm really more interested in is trying to rank for the actual place names. Right here, Laurel Canyon Dog Park, for example.
I can go over to the Keyword Planner and I can search for Laurel Canyon Dog Park. So after I have searched for this dog park name, I typically like to go over to the Keyword Ideas tab so it can actually show me how many searches are for that term. Laurel Canyon Dog Park has 390 monthly searches. This is not a general niche that has this type of traffic. This is one single dog park, one single location. 390 people a month search for it. And during some of the peak months of the year, it's closer to 500. And even during the down months of the year, there's still 320 at a minimum. I can continue down. Sometimes they'll even tell me some other relational phrases. It's possible Laurel Dog Park. Some of these people might actually be looking for this dog park. There are some other dog parks. Runyon Canyon happens to be in uh, Los Angeles as well. So then I can continue searching to try to find out what kind of traffic is out there and available for each of the different dog parks that are in the area. And don't necessarily just trust what you are seeing listed here. If you can cover a dog park that is not listed or a whatever your niche is that is not listed up at the top here, and if it actually has search traffic for it, that gives you an even better chance of getting up there in the rankings. I sometimes like to find the official website of the city. So for Los Angeles, it's laparks.org, and I can go there and get a list of the dog parks that are in this city. And then I can take that list back over to Google and try to figure out what kind of search traffic I have relating to that particular place. So this can work for anything that you go out in your local city and see. This can be free attractions, this can be paid attractions, this can even be local businesses. I could review different dog groomer businesses, go and visit them, take pictures of them, ask the owners a couple of questions, take a couple of pictures of the owners and the employees that work there. Obviously, you would need to get permission to be able to take pictures of the people that actually work there and to be able to post them on your website. But this type of thing makes for an awesome website and it's something that you do not see all over the place on everybody else's website. And not only that, but you have a unique way of then taking this type of city and niche targeting and turning it into a profitable Amazon site. Now one last thing that I would like to show you here before I conclude this class is the targeting in the Keyword Planner. One thing that you can sometimes do is instead of searching for traffic based on a full keyword phrase, Google knows when people live in particular areas. And as a result, if I just go over here and type in dog parks, how is Google going to know what dog parks to show me? It is based on where I live, based on my IP address or whatever it is detecting as my location. So if it thinks that I live in Los Angeles, it'll show me Los Angeles dog parks. But if it thinks that I live in Greenville, South Carolina, then it's going to show me completely different results. 
This should be important to you as the website builder because it relates back to keyword phrases. When somebody just types dog parks into the search bar, it is not assigning traffic to dog parks in Los Angeles because they didn't type that in. They just typed in dog parks. However, you can't go over here and just type in dog parks and expect to get a realistic amount of searches. This is going to be a really high number. So there are 6,600 people every month that actually search for just the term dog parks. And if you look down below, dog park, there's actually 14,800 people that search for this particular term. So how do you know how many of these people are actually looking for that type of place or business in a particular city? You find that out by going up to the targeting. So I'm currently targeting the United States. So it is showing me how many people here in the entire United States actually search for these terms. So if I remove my targeting from it and go down below and type in my city instead, I can search for Los Angeles the city, Los Angeles the county. One of the things that I usually like to do though is go down here and look for the locations that enclose my city. And I like to look for this Nielsen region. And this actually includes more of that metropolitan area that I am trying to target here. So I'm now going to target the Los Angeles, California region instead. And I'm going to let it readjust these results for me. So check that out. Of those 6,600 people in the entire country that were searching for dog parks, I now have 480 of them that are actually searching for it within my targeted area. And down below for dog park, I get the same type of thing. 1,600 people are searching for it. So I recommend using both of these tactics to truly understand what kind of search engine traffic might be available for the niche you are going after. Use your general USA targeting and use really specific keywords that actually include the city name in it. So something like dog parks, Los Angeles, and then change your targeting to lot to your city and just search for the general niche or even search for the actual place. I could search for just Laurel Canyon right here. And I can figure out how many people might just type in the word Laurel Canyon that live in Los Angeles. And I could also find out what other types of things they might be talking about, whether Laurel Canyon relates to more than just this location that I'm going after. So for this example, there obviously are other things that people are trying to find in Los Angeles, California that use the name Laurel Canyon. So that would let me know that it would be important to include on the actual dog park ending. So I can find out now how many people are searching for it that specifically live within this city, perhaps. Now these numbers are going to be lower when you start to search for your targeting here and a specific 
place or business name because some of that traffic for this actual location gets searched for in other places, maybe nearby cities, maybe people that are planning on taking a vacation to Los Angeles and they want to be able to find a dog park to take their dog to. You do have other circumstances that will generate traffic on keyword phrases like this, which is why I recommend really taking the time and searching all these keyword phrases two different ways like this. Search it with the general USA targeting and keep your keyword phrases pretty specific and then switch it around and search with city targeting using a more general keyword phrase. This will help you to get a clear picture of what kind of traffic is really out there for these different parks or whatever the other business is that you are thinking about targeting. Now I want to reemphasize that one more time. You do not have to only go for outdoor attractions like this. You can do any kind of business that is out in a local city. Let's say I wanted to try to sell computers or iPads or something like that on my website. I could make a site for a particular city and I could go around and review every different business place in the city that sells computers and iPads and maybe even go around and review the different places that repair computers and iPads, places that sell accessories for them. Maybe even go to a couple of internet cafes and review them. Any different niche that you could possibly think of, chances are it has something out in your city that relates to it in terms of a business or some type of place that you can simply go to that has a specific name associated with it. Beyond the actual places though, you also have things like news and events. I could almost guarantee that there are some dog shows in Los Angeles. So I could do a little bit of research on what those shows are, dog events in California. I could find one or a variety of different types of shows relating to my niche and I can review those especially the annual type of events. I really, really like those because you review it once, you'll get a large spurt of traffic that year when that event comes around and in, even in months leading up to it. But then next year, when it comes back again, that traffic will hit all over again. So if you have a variety of different events and things like that, that you have featured on your site throughout the course of a year, then you will always be getting some kind of active traffic on your site for relating keyword phrases. I also mentioned news. Even if you don't have a specific local place that you can tie into a page, you could do something like monitor the news in a local area, but relating only to a specific niche. So I could monitor news in Los Angeles that only relates to dogs. And maybe when a really interesting or popular story comes along that has something to do with a dog, I can write a little opinion piece on my own website about that news story because it relates to that particular area. And this is also something that you can 
use as a really powerful tactic to bring in a lot of search traffic that you are almost guaranteed to have in the USA. It's all going to be USA traffic. And then you also have the guarantee that these people are going to be very likely to be interested in your niche, making it a lot easier to complete sales on those relational Amazon products. Now, in between now and the next class in this series, I would recommend for you to go through and try to figure out what city you want to target, what niche you want to target, and come up with a list of at least 10 different places that you could feature on your website. And all 10 of those places should be so showing some type of keyword traffic. It doesn't necessarily have to be hundreds of monthly searches. If you can just find something with 100 monthly searches, that is more than enough to use for just a single page on your website that's going to be featuring a particular place. So try to come up with your city, try to come up with your niche, and try to come up with a list of at least 10 different places that you could feature on your website. Then in the next class, we will take that information and continue on with the construction of this website, and I'll be walking you guys through all of this step by step from start to finish so you can get a complete understanding of this strategy and put it into action on your own site.